Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to properly recharge your car's AC system using a set of gauges that I got from Harbor Freight Tools. Let's get started. Now today I'm going to be checking the pressures and adding refrigerant if needed on my 2003 Ford Explorer. So I just want to go over the gauges real quick and teach you guys what to look for and how to read them. Your blue gauge, that's your low side, okay? It'll show a lower temperature and if you come over here to the receiver, it's your low side because it's your suction side. So now the compressor, this is before the gas is getting compressed, it's sucking it into it so you have a lower pressure. Now your red side is your high side, okay? That's your high pressure line. That's after the compressor has compressed it and it's sending it, it's now at a high PSI, and that's why your gauges go much higher on the scale. I just wanna talk about superheat real quick. Superheat is the difference between the pressure to temperature relationship on your low side gauge versus the temperature of the low side suction line coming out of the receiver on the car which I'll show you in a little bit. So you want your superheat to be around 12 to 15 degrees. If you're at 30 degrees, it needs more refrigerant. If you have eight degrees, you overcharged it, but that's okay, just leave it alone. If you're at like negative five, that's when I'd be concerned because then refrigerant starts getting into the compressor and it starts slugging it. That's not what you want. That's real bad for the compressor. So just try to get around 12 to 15 degrees. So the first thing you want to do is to locate your high and low side pressure ports. On the Explorers, the third and fourth generations, I don't know about the second gen, but I know for a fact on the third and fourth, your low side is going to be over here, and your high side is going to be right here. Now this is called your manifold, with your knobs in all the way, closed, and your pressure connectors backed out all the way, you can go ahead Take your low side, we'll bring it down here, and we'll connect it. It clips on just like a uh, air compressor, like air tools. And then we'll take our high side, unclip it, take your cap off, don't lose it, and click it on, just like that. Now, what we can do is we can screw these in It'll open up the valve and you'll get a reading. As you can see on the high side, I have about 100 PSI. Now if we screw it in on the low side, I should read about the same. Yep, see that? It's about 107. So that's good. That means we have gas in the system. Now if you're at zero or three or five, that usually means that it all leaked out and now you have air in the system. So you can't add refrigerant because compressors cannot compress air. It can only re compress refrigerant. So in that case, you'd have to find a leak, get a vacuum pump, suck a vacuum down, and then charge with clean refrigerant, which I'm gonna show you how to do in a different video because I have to do that on my Mustang when I replace the compressor. So right now, after we know we have gas in the system, you wanna go ahead and you wanna start your vehicle. Now, with your vehicle running, we can go over to the AC controls. You want to put it on max AC, max cool, and number four fan speed. Now, over here under the hood, you can see that with the compressor running, the pressure went down from 107 to 40 because now the compressor is pulling the gas into it so the pressure goes down. And the pressure went from 100 on our high side to around 200 to 10 because as it compresses the gas you get that high psi and then the gauge goes up which is good now one thing i just want to show you is that if your gauge is around 400 450 that's bad stop don't add any gas you have something wrong with your ac system i just want to come over here so i can actually talk a little bit better now high pressure usually means a clogged orifice tube a bad receiver or a bad metering device all of which in your case you can't do You'd have to take it to a shop. I mean, they'd have to pull a dashboard out, which is kind of a problem. But if you have good pressures, like 200, 225, that's perfect. 
So to simulate driving, what you usually want to do is rev your engine to 1500 RPMs. That way the fan is spinning because what's going to end up happening is the gauge will go down more and this one will go up a little bit higher. Now you see how well that anti-flutter works. Look at that. So what I'm going to do here is rev the engine a little bit using my butterfly and please excuse the wind. I just want to demonstrate that the pressure is going to go down. So check this out. Then you let go and the pressure goes back up. Now, if you rev to 1500 and you hear your compressor quickly cycling on and off, that means it's being starved of gas and the computer's shutting it down. Your low side pressure switch is shutting it down. So that means you need more refrigerant. But as you can see in my case, when I rev it up, the compressor stays engaged because it has enough coolant in it. Now at this time, we can take our infrared thermometer and we're gonna take a temperature of our low side charge line, which is this fat one right here. 8, 73, all right, 74. So we'll do 74. Then we come to our gauge here. If you look at the blue, before I told you about the PT difference, it converts it for you. So it's at like 52. So we do 74 minus 52 is 22. So we're up by 10 degrees. It's low on coolant or refrigerant. God darn it, Nick. We gotta add a little bit more. So we take our can of R134A and you can see a little sight glass right there. Now in this yellow line, there's air right now. So we need to purge that air out. What you gotta do is you gotta open up the can and then you just crack this valve ever so slightly like that. You see that coolant spray out? That's perfect. Now all the air is out of the line. So now what you wanna do is you want to crack open your low side gauge and let it charge. You want to go five seconds open, close it. Five seconds open, close it. And you'll see the gauge change and you slowly make your readings. So you'll actually see the refrigerant go in through this little sight ball. Watch this. See that? Closed. Open. Closed. Now we're going to let the engine run a little bit so we could get our pressures to equalize and we'll take another reading. Another rule of thumb is you want to feel this and as the old guys say, beer can cold. If it feels like a cold beer can out of the fridge, then that's good. Then that's how you know you're on the right track. So with a fresh can connected, we're going to open up this piercing valve. Now once again, we're going to purge the line. Ready? There we go. So our refrigerant come out, line is purged. Again with the sight glass, Open five seconds, close five seconds. Here we go. Gonna give it a little bit of a revs so the refrigerant can cycle around. So now after adding refrigerant, we can take our temperature again. 66, so it's that one. 50, 60, okay, so we'll do 60. 60 degrees, come over here. 48, I'll say. 48, 60, minus 48. Boom, 12 degrees, right there, that's perfect. So again, one more time, you take your temperature of that, you take this pressure, you convert it, the, uh, the gauge does it for you already, then you subtract the two, and you should get 12 to 15 degrees. I've got 12 degrees, that's perfect. So you don't wanna add any more for fear of slugging the compressor. So guys, that's how to add refrigerant to your Ford Explorer or any vehicle. That's how you add refrigerant to any vehicle. You use these gauges, you use the R134A, all you need is the thermometer, and uh, the gauge converts the temperature for you. So you get your super heat that I talked about and you can get this thing running real good. It'll feel real nice inside the cabin. Guys, I just wanna say thank you. Um, my channel has like 489 subs now, which is great. Uh, it feels real cool knowing that there's other four liter people out there like me who are enthusiasts and who love explorers. So I appreciate everybody who subbed. And if you didn't sub yet, 
consider it. I'm not gonna make you because I'm not your parent, so it's up to you. It's a free country. Um, but yeah, dude, that's how you do your AC on your Ford Explorer. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And definitely leave a comment. If you have any questions, let me know. I know it's a little bit tricky as far as like the superheat subcooling goes. Once you get it down, your AC will feel real good. So thanks for watching.